I'm Edward Barber. Um, the Jay Oskarby and I have set up a studio about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, and we do a very broad range of different design objects from furniture through to product design, um, lighting, and some starting to get into clothing as well and footwear. I think as a child growing up, I was always fascinated by the way things went together. I, was really, I really loved making things, painting and drawing, and I always knew, like, this is my earliest memory, I always knew I was going to do something creative, which probably involved some form of construction. Yeah, I mean, I had no idea at all. I mean, I loved drawing when I was a child, and I loved making stuff, but then I went to, I did a foundation course, then I thought I'd do fine art, and then I realised I didn't want to do that, I wanted to do something with design, so I did a degree in interior design, then I went on to do an MA in architecture, and now I've ended up designing furniture and products. So, and even then, you know, things could still change. Yeah, I think having access to the library at the Royal College was probably as inspiring as any of the tutors. But also perhaps being really inspired by some of the old designers and architects sort of maybe made me go in this direction. You can't help but be influenced and really inspired by that environment where in one room someone's making a garment, the next room someone's making a vehicle, that ends up someone's laying down graphics. Or... Well, exactly, and, and I probably spent oh, a third of my time there, even though I was doing the architecture course, I probably spent a third of my time in the photo labs doing some screen printing and just generally messing around. Because, it, it, you know, it was a, it's a creative place. We're talking about the design industry. The design industry is so huge that you really can't escape the fact that it considers itself a marketing function. And it is about styling. We don't work to market trends. We're not, we don't have, um, um, what they call the round table discussions with potential buyers, you know, we don't, it's not really, it doesn't interest us. For us, it's much more about a creative endeavour, it's much more of an art. Any product or piece of furniture we design, in our opinion, it has to have some sort of personality, have some character, so that it's not just an inanimate, dead table, chair, whatever. It has to have something that, you know, you can relate to in a certain way. Each project takes a new direction and that's what we're talking about yeah. when we say that you know, we've got a sort of, it's like an artistic pursuit because we've got certain things that we need to experiment, you know, whether it's colour, whether it's um, machining metal, whether it's working in, in timber. You know, each time a project comes up, we think, okay, well, we haven't worked in that field before. And, it, you know, it has to be appropriate to the project, but at the same time, you know, for example, when we did, um, we did these tables, um, iris tables for establishing the suns and there, they're an edition, a limited edition piece. And so when you're doing limited edition pieces, it gives you the opportunity to, to really experiment because obviously the, the cost, I mean the price that they sell them at gives you that, which is generally higher, gives you the opportunity to, to be a bit more self-indulgent and experiment with things that you couldn't do in mass production. So actually edition pieces can be really fun. Um, and for that project, we experimented with anodizing, which we'd never really done before and creating a piece of furniture out of uh, machining aluminium, which again is a very expensive process to do, as a, you couldn't do it as a production piece. There were two reasons why we, de we developed this lamp, because firstly, they didn't have anything like this, but also desk lighting's changed a lot over the last few years when, because people used to type or write, and now 90% you know, of people work on computers, so they work in front of a screen, so you don't really need a light to light your screen. So actually, a desk light now is really to create a little bit of atmosphere or maybe light your notebook, which is off to the side. You know, we've got some of the really early sketches here. I suppose the idea came from, as Ed was saying, this idea of taking some of the over-function out of the angle poise and creating something incredibly simple. Like this folding profile here gives you the function, it sort of, you know, it, it enables you to not get glare, but also to be able to focus the light back onto the wall or down onto your sketchbook. And in fact, when we were trying to, using this split line detail here, communicate one of our key influences, which is the sort of the design of um, what we call hidden design or the design of um, engineered things like aircraft wings and so on. So this split line here is rather reminiscent of the sort of split lines you get on the on a wing, you know. Um, this one is designed to go by the sofa, so when you're sitting down, have it by the side of you and you can turn it here and you can angle it. Very quickly we move from a sketchbook into white card models or foam models and then again you know within a matter of 
hours or a couple of days, we often work in the material itself. So if we're talking about something like this, we, you know, we very quickly made a, an aluminium prototype. We designed this, well, as I say, four, four or five years ago. Um, halogen bulb was the obvious choice for this type of light, but now things have changed a bit. Um, you, you need to use more energy efficient bulbs. So what we've, what we've done now is um, we've converted this into an LED an LED lamp. Now this is a very crude first prototype, it doesn't look like this, I can assure you. But this gives you um, an equivalent amount of light. So we actually we've got five LED lights in here in the end. When we design something, we want it to, in effect, last forever. In terms that it's not so, um, it hasn't got a sort of style or a trend that's going to sort of disappear after a few years. You know, we, we, we want it to visually stand the test of time. And for that reason, you know, a lamp where you can change the bulb, in theory, as long as you can still buy those bulbs, you know, you can have it forever. As soon as you go to a, an LED solution, um, this is all part of the lamp and you can't change it. Okay, it could last for 25 years, but ultimately when that fails, you have to throw the whole thing away. So it changes lighting from really a piece of furniture into a piece of technology now. We're following a sort of a, our own path and during that, along that path, you know, there may be bits where we sort of come closer to whatever's going on at the moment. Maybe it's the use of a material or a colour or something, but we we actually actively avoid any trends that we can see. We, we veer away from that and go into a completely different direction. Yeah, so when we go to Milan, we don't go and do the fair because we don't want to see it all. We don't read the design magazines, you know. We try and just um, focus on our own ideas and what we want to do and not be influenced by market factors at all.